Nimbula, Nimbula Vinaka, Nahabakalev Sarabe, Kumina Semitic Menaka Vinanikua, a single lot to live with Tingome Viti, a Naika Rosanga Vulcatolu, and is singing a Nibulo Sepitemba. Sao Chingona Walu and Rosanga Vulcan Miniti, and a cabin single to live with Nakongo, a Nitaka Ni Rongovinaka to Kana Bio Liva Liva, a May Nayatu Hawaii. Only take ni on your bull bull of an acatico, and a bull of the bunga on the Samatic Mikina and a cabinet in the Nicoa. And the Maro Takasar and the Solivican and on a ticketing on a gom in the Mendame Vata, the Maybeta La Noa, and the Maybe was say Kina and a cabinico and a Veulutanga so a Bimbi, a weekend and I took a cabacon is Samatic Mibiti, a Sonisamatic Namena Bunota Bunisamatic Mikin, most Relia, Don Bulavinaka, and Bulavinaka, Chokoni Mua, and Don Bulavinaka Minisilandi, and Don Bulavinaka Talanga Mirica, Catalanga Kin, where Latico Messia, Bulavinaka Mastale, my Chapani, my Tokolo Eloma, my Inglandi, my Rope, I became in Nangasematico Mani, what in a Vital Longo, a Ketovam Bulitan in a Viocani, and a Cabinaranicua. And uh, Marau ni roti kungoro na nanta bulangi, uh, ro bulangi tokei, bulangi tokei, ena uh, kavi na kani kuwa, ena uh, kena mai vital nata kitiko, endo na iba kareta ki zaka zaka ni linga, kaya zana tiko na zangi ni weisau, enda uh, maru taka ni romiti ko na kenda mali na kavi ni kuwa ro na nanta uh, ro ro vaka ita vaka lebo na endo uh, ni songo songo ngo na Viti Association of Visual Artists. As an can a Yavana Zocobata Navava, a VT Association of Visual Artists, a Medanabacum Bulisarango, in a can a Turang Luliu, or Irami Bulli, a can a non a buke buke, or Maria Rova. Rombulivinaca, Bulle Rami, Bulla Maria Nimbulivinaca, Bulvinagana Nanda, Bulvinagana Viocani. Ina ko lebo na bimbulong ng itigo mai ito na kana ni Romarona ni Romay itigo na nabibo sa akin na vitalan na wakangu santo na kana kena marutagi katalitek kena tigi na mo na na ko lebo Rami bumbulbi na ka Maria how's it in your part of the world bumbulbi na ka dalavina all the way from the jet set down of Nandi well we hope it will soon be a jet set town again. Um, but yes, it's uh, just lovely to be with uh, you, Dr. T, and uh, with all your listeners tonight. And uh, we, we 
excited to be able to share with you a little bit about what's going on in the arts community in Fiji this evening as we chat. So uh, thank you so much for having us on your show this evening. Oh, you're most welcome. Uh, uh, Maria, I just like to uh, acknowledge yeah, the VAVA, your association for all the amazing work you all have been doing uh, behind the scene even before COVID-19, I'm sure. And uh, now uh, with the event that we'll be talking about tonight, which is going to take place tomorrow, uh, it's really exciting to see uh, what you are all planning uh, to do in which uh, many of us who are listening in uh, will be part of it too. So uh, to kickstart our Talanoa, it will be, it'll be really good to get to know both of you a little bit more. Uh, if you can uh, both introduce yourselves. Uh, if you want to either go Irami, ladies first, what do you think? <laughs> you lady. Okay. <laughs> so don't be like, uh, yeah, Maria, if you can just uh, tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and uh, your family in Fiji and uh, what do you do and why are you here tonight? Okay, so um, yes, my name is Maria Rova and uh, I am a, a visual artist so living in Nandi. Um, we have a, uh, a family run art studio that uh, has, is called Singovo Studios. And uh, we started that about 20 years ago uh, as a family. Uh, working mostly with the uh, uh, painting onto Masi Vula Vula, all the way from uh, the beautiful island of Vatulele, where my mother-in-law is from. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the inspiration that I, I um, use as an artist, the paintings that I create um, come from, comes from uh, early visits early on in my uh, married life here in Fiji, um, going to my husband's village in Tavuni and uh, being immersed in the, the village life there. And uh, um, it's it is something that has uh, just been very much a part of uh, my own evolution as a visual artist. I'm actually a primary school teacher by profession, but I've sort of uh, gone astray on that one and ended up uh, working as a full-time artist. And uh, um, that's become a way of life and something that has uh, has been really inspiring to be part of uh, Fiji's contemporary arts community in a time of huge transition and uh, and evolution. So um, you're very honored to, to be in on all of that and uh, working together with our local artists to, to just raise the, the profile of the arts in, in the country and and hopefully to bring many, many more people in to be part of, of the exciting work that's going on. So. Mm. Hey, so Vinaka. Vinaka for logging in from the Jet Set Town uh, of Fiji and uh, also uh, sharing a little bit about the Singapore Studios. Eh? So for, I'm sure many of uh, us uh, living in Fiji uh, have seen some of your amazing work um, and also the uh, the connections that you have with the tourism industry and also uh, promoting yeah, some of our Fijian uh, imageries in terms of the art uh, that you have uh, produced uh, and also acknowledging a beautiful family uh, for the support yeah, that they've given you. For that, Maria. Uh, Anabunonita <laughs> Nitigo Namena Corro, Manimole Casarmea, my Susu Talma in Bow, or my two kin and my Tumbagan and Nobula, Alawai de Corni Bully, Melda Vasar and Yosali Yatovana Evatana and Ulini Ultoraki, the University of the Pospira, and the Bunway House and my ticket booking and Nungu, my Ragatogana, rather than Ruini Sindo Cascasa. Wagon Kinanu 
Setoman nanti bunga minggu yang lalu mani sibuk terus sokul nampak kena nunggu tak kau tahu mai lu sekilat tak nak kena guna. Sebuli dia lebu nak, sama iwa butukan dia lebu nak tak tak kau tahu kumbu. Enak nunggu sama i tiku enak i tiku tiku ni ni songko songko akan tuntu ni gue binti. Sa dutungan enak nunggu nunggu mami kena buki tiku kena enak nunggu tengok ni orang mana ni binti. So di tiga hari kau nak tali yang dibuka kamu, kian rasa terdetak, kena bukai, kena kena sengai membudin itu nama misalnya mereka bukai kini, na na tak tak buka kamu, na tak tak buka kamu, mereka kena kerja dua tak kena nampak kasih, satu kan nak kerja dua tak kena nampak kasih, yang kau yang tu nak kena ngau na, itu tak tipu kau na tak mata galih tak tak kena join dia ni kerja tak buka kamu, buka tu untuk kungu kau, ibu bini di tak buka tu kena kerja tu untuk kili teni kini. Jadi anak tos tiga ni ngau na, satu tos batal tiga anak pakai nak bawa anak nak mutaki, tos tal tiga na, ni kena satu muda ke tiga na, na na tos tos ni dah tak bawa kontrol ini, sama ni lembu na kalau bawa kita kita kau kena kena teri dah kita kena na tak tak bawa, kena rukuk itu bawa na na nanda, orang nama ni binti si si orang nanti kau binti. Orang nak mohon yang tertib buat nak talenti nak kena terus lagi. Nak kena buat naya ko buat mungkin na na songko songko ni dondro ni pakai ungu meri ni ribu ke balik di wir nanti wir nanti wir nak talenti buka. Nak nak balik sarai ram. Yoklah nak tarung ko nak tarung bikin doro ruan ok lapan bi Maria. Ah, iram ni. Oh, santu untuk tali tak ketungan anro ini saya tak boleh mesti apa kata apa. Nono mu tali tak kamu ngolen apa nono ni ini anro ini sena betah membalatan anro ini kotong goreng tak kum. Tak boleh mesti nangun apa. Tak boleh nangun aku sekali lagi. Nono untuk tak ketungan ana tak tak kumbu. Yang mana sekarang ni kelat tu nak ni balik balik. Eh, tak ketungan dari itu ni tak ketungan suan temata. So nak kanda, yo, aku sangat ni mana kila nak kena inak, sena tak boleh tu kina, sena nembimbi ni cara tak kau tu, sengira bi, sengira itu kau tumbuh tak kena, sengira kau boleh tinggal nak kena nembimbi ni kena tuku ni tiba ni tuku tuku, nak kena sengai ni bukan dia otak itu baka borong borong, kau beri tumbuh tak kena santu santu uri dia uti kau tu nak mumu nana 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 nanda uri dia tak kau nana kau tu tak kau tak kau nak peni sena gila isu. Nabi kau ngono nak apa kau ngono? Jangan orang kau tumbuh dari kemeja, sehingga main di tempat orang kau buli, sehingga mana lah kau na investi ni apa? Di pasi bila nak kau buli di baru tak? Kena kau na sehingga li tumbiri kena na nak apa kau ngono? Di rona turanga, macam apa tu ni mula dah apa? Tak kira kau mina kau untuk kita untuk tukun untuk ngah orang tu epil di kau apa? Awak tak kira John Pule main di sini? Rongo rosang gaya ibu kena nunggu tumbuh tak kena ibukan tunggu ni. Sehingga rongo kena nunggu nunggu kata kata nak kena rain kena tumbuh ni bukan anak anak tak. Kau yang kosong gaya buli tu kena lembu nak. Mai nak bunuh ayah kosong gaya mesti kau me teteh ni nak nunggu kata kata. Nak kena sa mesti kau bunuh dewa yang dibesi guru guru nak kena sa rain ni sa si kobi sa sure ti kena bi sombol lep sa mani Orang itu kena ni dona tak tak kamu itu guna kena nak i itu kita lengan na na bekar ni suli bekar na na bekar ni pun dapat buli kita lengan kena bumbin bumbin bekar na itu ki bumbin bumbin bekar na itu bekar na kita lindu go si bumbin bumbin ni dah reda lalu benda itu guna bir na suli suli go minta kaku asar ni ni mula tak tak malah dek kena tak bekau itu dek kena mer tumbel mer tunggu dengan orang ni salah ni buru buru non terpulak Urur ni non retos kiliu na non reda na urur, kena buki telengan na non retu. Mai kau sange mai toso tinggal mina nunggu kata kata sange mai lebu tel na kau mani way tebiti kau kina, na tak tak kau kau go non rebuki itu kau nga na tiga wira na tali di bawah. Sebenar, kena kau balik sara irami nama saya Maya. Kau terungai terungi Maria. Maria, you mentioned in your interview that you were uh, a trained uh, primary school teacher, but I want to ask about your uh, background of uh, of art as an artist. When did your interest in art start? 
Ooh, that's it's actually very hard to pinpoint. I think um, going back to early childhood, uh, we were brought up by a single mom. There was four of us at home, and we lived out in the countryside. Um, no television, no obviously. In, uh, uh, I won't tell you how old I am, but there was no smartphones and computers and screens around in those days. Uh, this is in uh, a rural part of America. And um, so we were very, uh, very much left to our own devices to figure out fun things to do in our free time. And uh, for me and my siblings, that a lot of that was to do with being creative, whether it was gardening or um, doing uh, uh, we had a friend who had a pottery that we would go and uh, learn how to use the wheel and form pots and make little figurines out of clay and uh, fire them in a sawdust pit. Um, a lot of uh, times because uh, money was really tight if we wanted to make Christmas presents, have you know, be able to buy Christmas presents for our family and friends or uh, have a birthday gift to give. Uh, we had to make it. There wasn't money to go out and buy it. So, and they say that the necessity is the mother of invention. So, you know, in those cases, we just sewing, knitting, drawing, painting onto whatever scraps of cloth were around and um, creating art that, uh, that became something that uh, was so fulfilling and, and fun to do. And then I had, um, an amazing art teacher who really uh, drew that talent out of me and gave me the confidence that, that I could do something that I had, uh, you know, recognized that there was a special gift. And um, that was that was life changing for me to, to have a teacher, actually a couple of teachers like that in my primary school. So when I walk into um, schools here in Fiji and, and see that uh, with so many schools, it's, it's very, very challenging to be able to run an effective arts program just in terms of, of the space available and, and the resources and, and the teacher's experience. Um, it, it, you know, it just, it, it breaks my heart. And that's something that I would love to see over, over the next few years, I would love to see our organization, the VT Association of Visual Artists, also really advocating and campaigning for, um, for more arts education in, in Fiji schools, because I think, think that's, that's very pivotal. pivotal. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, so for me, my own creative um, confidence and, and that sort of uh, sense of exploration of uh, that can do attitude if, if we don't have something well let's just try something else um, yes. that has put me in very good stead for for being here in Fiji um, and and trying to find uh, ways to support my family and um, realizing that um, okay I can't find the nice beautiful canvases and the lovely paintbrushes that we used to have back home, so what else can we use? And in our studio now, we actually uh, we paint on uh, yeah on the white bark cloth. This is our canvas by and large, and um, we use the brushes, uh, the sponges instead of uh, being able to to bring in good brush paint brushes. We we do the Kesa Kesa style with the um, using sponges and applying the, uh, a lot of our designs through stencils that we cut by hand and layer on top of each other to make beautiful, bright, attractive designs. So um, it's, yeah, I think one, one of the, the important things as an artist is to be able to, to think outside the box and to, mm -hmm. to be able to um, come up with something novel and, and express yourself in a way that nobody else in this whole wide world has ever done so. Mm -hmm. uh, leave your mark in the world and that's always a fun challenge and um, something that uh, I think we've had a, quite a bit of discussion over the last few weeks with our our artists what what is it that that makes good art and and um, that brings you to a point where you can actually put a, a fairly good solid price on your work and, and one of those things is definitely originality um, mm. and and that's something that uh, um, yes, that finding that balance between drawing on traditional 
ideas and designs uh, that have been uh, repeated over and over again, because that's part of local culture, but then adding in a little bit of your own spice, your own interpretation, your own uh, vision into the mix. So it's been an interesting journey, that's for sure. Wow, well done. And I'm uh, glad to hear both of you eh, acknowledging uh, teachers that helped you. Uh, you know, you acknowledge your art teacher uh, in, in America and for uh, Irami uh, also acknowledging eh, the, uh, John Pule and uh, Epele Hawafa. So you have people around you eh, that kind of support and uh, give you, I think I like the word, the confidence, eh? confidence to, to be different. Uh, to do something that others don't do, because I know for sure as someone that went through the education system in Fiji, um, you know, the art, uh, you know, art classes or art, uh, art and craft or art uh, programs are usually, you know, not kind of put into the major kind of, you know, subjects that are taught uh, in school. So I, I know for sure that VAVA uh, has have got a mission. Uh, and I know you both are on a mission. So Vinakova uh, for mentioning uh, the organization, eh, the VT Association of Visual Artists, because I know uh, having a, a, a voice like this, a combined voice, uh, will be really, really effective yeah, for all of the artists to work together. So speaking of VAVA and speaking of the association of uh, VT Association of Visual Artists, uh, maybe we can ask Rami uh, as the chair of uh, VAVA, uh, would you like just to uh, share to the audience uh, about this organization? And then I will ask uh, Maria to add on uh, to the role as the uh, vice uh, uh, chairperson of the organization. Just uh, explain a little bit uh, what is behind this organization and how did this idea of uh, the VAVA organization came to be uh, in existence today? Nakirami. Well, the Association for Visual Artists came, uh, you know, birth on the four years ago in 2017, and uh, there were so many uh, plans in place uh, for the artists uh, just during our Talano sessions over the years the importance to uh, bring a voice together. So we, we tried that so many years uh, and luckily uh, we were able to uh, get together uh, in 2017, uh, getting all the artists together uh, to formalize and establish the association and which eventually uh, it happened. So we were very thankful at that time uh, that it did happen. And at the same time, uh, there was a purpose to uh, Establish an association of voice for the artist uh, due to the, you know, uh, there was more infringements on the intellectual properties of uh, artists and they are not protected and they have no place to voice their concerns. Uh, that is why uh, the VT Association was established in 2017. So we came back again four years later, uh, re established the association thanks to the uh, the agencies of ILO is helping us in uh, getting it uh, established, uh, getting every uh, regulations and laws in place for the association to run. Eh? And this is uh, one of our uh, key mission and key uh, areas that we were working on was to first to run a project as this, uh, the Wind of Change exhibition. And that will eventually will boost the uh, you know, the artist coming in, joining in and membership they will become a member of this. So we're looking at uh, uh, bigger things in the future. We have mission in place, uh, but first of all, the most important thing is to get this up and running. That's one of our key mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can actually add on to uh, what we're doing as the VT Association for Visual Artists. Maria. So I think uh, we, in a way, we were sort of pushed over to to the deep end, and we've ended up jumping right in, in, in terms of um, organizing what has mushroomed into quite a big undertaking, a, a, an event that has um, drawn in. We 
when we first sat down as the newly elected uh, VAVA committee in back in June, um, we talked about what we could possibly do to assist the uh, the artists, the arts community, and um, as as you probably know, the uh, the art market in Fiji is small. I mean, we're a small nation, and um, art is something that that you don't absolutely need to survive on. So um, it it is an item that is a sort of a um, you know, you need some disposable income in order to, to invest in art. And over the years, it's been amazing to see more and more local families doing that and taking pride in, in having a piece of local art on their walls. Um, but come the pandemic and uh, the, the way that almost every household has been affected and a lot of people have, have lost their, their income streams, that has really affected the, the ability of our members to be able to sell their work and make a living from it. And obviously connected to that is the, the borders closing. Um, the local art market is very small, but what we managed to survive on quite well generally is the fact that we have these plane loads of tourists flying into the country every day in normal times. And many of them bring extra dollars with them and are actually really um, keen to be able to buy some authentic craft work or creative artwork um, to remember their trip to Fiji by, to, to keep some sort of connection alive mm. for them with the beautiful experience they've had here. So there is a big market normally uh, within the tourism industry for, for, our, for all our creative uh, sector here um, and very suddenly the the carpet just was pulled right under out of our feet from for all of us so from just one month to the next February to March last year um, I think many many of us had had commissions cancelled had projects put on hold had um, customers asking for refunds um, and it was just a complete meltdown a complete disaster um, so one of the um, very specific situations with the arts community is that um, the visual artists, many of us are freelance artists. So we're working um, more or less on our home um, or in small family groups, uh, usually quite scattered out and um, not registered as businesses, not part of any sort of formal setup, which means mm. that many artists in Fiji um, do not actually pay um, into their FNPF accounts mm -hmm. and have not built up savings. So for most of last year, that put a lot of our members into a really difficult spot because all of a sudden, um, everyone in Fiji was expected to start drawing from their FNPF accounts in order to buy food and pay the bills. And uh, uh, you know those those lockdown payments drawdowns weren't available for our artists um, and, and many of the, the creatives of, of also have day jobs in the tourism industry around here in the West, which uh, they were let off from. So huge disaster, a big, big upheaval and earthquake in everyone's lives. Um, and some people have managed to find a way to um, do something different. I know one artist who's uh, instead of just creating drawings and painting, she's now doing um, printing kesa kesa onto material and sewing up um, beautiful sulu chambas and, and wool shirts and being able to um, have an income stream for that from that. So it's been interesting to see many people hustling and doing side small side businesses and and using their creative skills in a different way mm -hmm. um, and. Yes, so that's that's partly why we thought this exhibition would be a good thing to do. And we've just hit the ground running um, without even, we're still going through the process of being formally registered. There's no money at all. We're all doing it uh, on a shoestring type budget as volunteers, putting into the pot if somebody needs to go from Nandi to Suva, everyone sort of contributing a few dollars to for them to buy their bus fare and off they go and uh, um, just making it happen somehow. But there's been a huge, it's just such a joy to, to find that um, this idea resonated, first of all, with the artists and then with the, the wider community. It's uh, just the energy that sort of um, bubbled up 
around this exhibition mm. ha has been just uh, uh, really, really good to see. Uh, I was just going to ask um, the a question, but then you answered uh, partly of it. You know, I was thinking, how have the you know some artists been supporting themselves? Because you said that you know definitely yeah, from February to March, uh, since the COVID last year, uh, definitely yeah, a lot of artists. Uh, we've been watching it from here, particularly those who are in the tourism industry, uh, those who work for the airline, and and it's kind of like um, a domino effect. Eh? Uh, right through uh, the communities. So I was going to ask, like, how have they been supporting themselves? So thank you for giving that example eh, of that artist who decided to go and do some uh, printing um, and changing a little bit into Naisulu Chamba and Vitavaya label for uh, giving that example. So maybe I'll ask Irami. Um, Irami, what about uh, some other artists maybe that you know who maybe have done similar change um, of direction maybe, still within the arts, uh, but then changing of direction. Any example you want to share just to see the resilience of our people in Fiji? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you know, during the, the pandemic, the lockdown, especially here in the Suba area, um, Suba was really hit hard uh, and uh, everybody knows that. And, uh, you know, we kept in touch with the, the other artists, uh, how they're doing. But at the same time, you're trying to encourage them on um, what they can do. So we had a lot of Talano sessions on the phone, uh, uh, and most of them online also. Uh, it's trying to, you know, find them uh, a way so that they can actually be resilient in, you know, during this uh, dark hour that we were facing in the world. But at the same time, yes, uh, there were uh, artists, painters, uh, especially. The shirt I'm wearing is uh, is an artist. Uh, one of the artists from Nandi actually printed this and uh, I asked him to bring me, gave me two. So uh, I bought two beautiful shirts from him. Uh, he's, I think he's from, he's from Kandabu, Josaya. Josaya Matewai. So this is one of his uh, shirts that I'm wearing. Um, just those little things that can be, uh, that they can actually, you know, survive on and continue to, expand from what they know, yeah. especially the talent that they have. But some others are printing solos, some others are covering, doing little coasters, uh, creating all these little things from, from what they know already, because you know they, they do have uh, the tremendous talent. Because if somebody, what I believe is if someone identifies the potentials that you have uh, when you're young or as an artist, if you are able to, like for us as the committee, are able to find these potentials, you know, they, I would probably say that uh, this could be a, a turning point for most of these young artists. But what they needed, it, what they needed is the, the right path to follow and uh, to tap into. And only then they can explore more on what they can do with the talent that they have. And not to, you know, uh, it should be it should be encouraged, it's the main thing. It should be encouraged, they should be inspired, they should be motivated, that they can actually do, they can survive. And that's one of the main mottos that I usually say to young artists, that you can actually do it if uh, you know a couple of us are able to do it, then um, basically, yes, there's a possibility that they can actually uh, build that up and survive and you know support their livelihoods. Wow, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the other question too, I was going to ask like people like Josiah and the other artists who have moved on to make chamba and doing the carvings. How have you both seen um, artists utilizing the digital platform as a, a way of uh, promoting uh, their work? What are your thoughts on that? Basically, you know, when they submitted, uh, most of them submitted the artworks uh, for this uh, Window of Change exhibition, you could mm -hmm. really tell that there are quite a few artists that uh, submitted, you know, they're really actually tapping into the, the digital uh, art uh, aspects of it. And that's quite interesting. And, um, you know, you can actually uh, work on a piece of work through digital media. Mm -hmm. You can manipulate you your own work to um, 
the uh, internet or through digital uh, digital wise you can uh, you know do limited editions you can reprint you can transfer that into clothing or fashion or whichever product you want you know there's there's, there's a lot of possibilities there's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, ways that uh, everybody can tap into but it depends on the artists themselves they want to go this way right yeah there's a um, yeah. go go for it maria what one of the uh, participants in the, the exhibition this weekend uh, was uh, working as a destination uh, wedding photographer. I'm sure many people have heard of uh, Ropate Kama from the Kama Kachmi uh, uh, photography studio. And uh, his story is, is a similar one too, where uh, they had all their bookings for the year lined up and um, were doing really well. And then bang, along came COVID and everything just uh, completely you know, melted down, uh, cancellations right, left and center. And it's been very interesting to, to see what he's been doing. He's actually uh, come, gone back to what he said was a childhood love of cartoons and uh, stories and has taken to illustrating in a um, digital illustrated. So using his computer and uh, creating drawings. And at the same time, he's done a research uh, project, a, a, a sort of a journey of discovery into his own uh, background as, as an Itoke person and um, just reading behind the scenes, between the lines on the history that's uh, available and, and uh, doing a, a, a discovery of, of that side of, of his roots and identity and then translating that into his digital work. So um, when you visit the exhibition, definitely look out for the drawings by uh, Ropati Kama. He's uh, uh, one of the, the interesting examples of somebody who has whose direction has completely changed due to the pandemic and uh, who's, I think, uh, finding a lot of joy in, in having this sort of a putting things on pause, that very uh, fast paced life of the wedding photographer and having a chance to, to develop that other side of his creativity. So there's, there's wow. lots of stories like that out there. Yes, uh, that's really nice. You know, it's uh, heartwarming eh, to see that even though, uh, you know, this pandemic has affected so many of us yeah, in different ways and to see, you know, some of the artists to readapt um, their skills into another kind of uh, art form or another way of uh, expressing their artistic uh, abilities. That's amazing. Wow, I can't wait. I can't wait to uh, join in this exhibition. And I know you're both excited to share uh, this exhibition to us. And I know our listeners are wanting to know as well what to expect. And you, both of you are going to be uh, sharing with us or telling us uh, how to register and how to uh, join the exhibition, uh, virtual exhibition tomorrow and how long it will be. But before we go into uh, the details of uh, telling us about the virtual exhibition, I was interested um, in something that uh, I was just writing down the notes here. Um, I think it was you, Irami, um, like when you were talking about uh, the VAVA, uh, yes, the 2017, eh, when you brought the organization together. One issue that was uh, that came through was uh, the intellectual, the breach of intellectual property. Uh, can you just explain a little bit more and uh, um, what are some of the real issues that the artists face and what uh, you want to envision uh, this issue being dealt with um, in whether through the organization, through VAVA, or maybe both of you as artists would explain what are some of the ways that you can counter that? Can you just explain a little bit more there, Rami? And then Maria can add to that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the importance of intellectual property as a creative producer or a cultural producer is very vital for uh, the arts community to understand um, why is it there. Uh, there are laws in place, there's an infringement, but you know, like I uh, mentioned before in the past, there were you know, no uh, dialogues between artists uh, with institution in order to uh, get this across the message across to the, the cultural producers, yeah, artists. That's one of the main key issues that happened uh, in 2017 um, with certain uh, 
um, projects that came in place, um, you know, the utilizing the, uh, the intellectual properties of painters, of artists' work, and using it at their own will. Uh, those are the kind of things that, uh, that were happening in Fiji. So, uh, and ones that happen when, when artists do grief the grievances, when they take it up to institution or in other places or in other department, they couldn't access this, uh, the, the possibility that, you know, the assistance or the help or the advice or the consultant from any of these institutions, you know, to come in and help these artists. So most of them, you know, uh, are doing it on their own and are fighting alone on that, uh, on that course. So that is one of the big uh, mission was to formalize the association. And it could be one of the driving factors in tackling that those issues in, on intellectual property infringements. And, you know, nowadays people just can't do that. And uh, those are the kind of things that, uh, that are really, really important for cultural producers anywhere in the world. I know as for us, this is, uh, for us in Fiji, that's also one of the, the key areas. Uh, the reason also was, uh, you know, the importance of the association was, was to also bridge institutions in order for easy access of information and, uh, you know, to assist in this, uh, this big issue. So those are uh, examples of it. In the past, not only in 2017, in the past, uh, some kept on going. In the last two years, there were some other issues. Uh, some other places I found out that one of uh, our artist masterpieces were printed just around the corner and was hanging in one house and you could tell it's a print. It's a reprint. Uh, so those are the issues that artists are facing, but you know they're not knowing what has happened to their work. So these are the the key areas. One of the key mission of uh, Vava was to allow that uh, that we are actually aware of what's happening with the artist work, but also a lot of awareness on mm -hmm. teaching and educating the artist on how to protect their work mm -hmm. and how to uh, if they are putting it online. Um, is uh, what Rafa is doing at the moment. We are, we are make sure, making sure that the work are protected. Uh, Maria will, uh, will will explain on that a little bit. And uh, you know she has much more experience in uh, the, the the infringements of uh, intellectual copyright. You know she also faced that. And uh, those are the key things that, that uh, Rafa is keeping an eye on for the local works, um, especially our artists. Not only that, you know, so it's a big, uh, big, broad challenge to uh, the cultural sector, yeah. even the art sector too. And not only for the visual artists, for massive makers, for casa cases, and for all other um, uh, visual perspect of uh, the art scene. Yeah. Yes. So the Rami Maria. Uh, yes, I think it's a double-edged sword. Eh? It's um, mm. the, there is a lot of possibility in the, using your art in different ways through digital reproductions, and uh, um, at the same time having your art exposed in online in digital format makes it very easy for people to to cut and paste and, and grab your designs, grab your concepts and um, use them. In, in other words, image theft, and, and it is a problem. Um, but I think what far outweighs that problem is this opportunity of being able to get out there and expose um, your creative work to the rest of the world, just widening your market way beyond your neighborhood, way beyond the borders of, of our islands through to the rest of the world. Um, and the, uh, yeah, I think what a lot of people don't understand is if somebody buys a painting from an artist, they do not at the same time buy the rights to that painting, to the digital versions of that painting or to anything reproduced. So uh, that remains the property of the artist, that is the artist intellectual property. And uh, that can be a very powerful tool, not only for the artist, but should the artist pass on, that intellectual property becomes uh, something that they can leave as a legacy to their children or to their loved ones. 
and um, their loved ones are, would be able to reproduce those designs or, or turn them into fabric designs or put them onto merchandise and, and monetize them if they want to. Um, use them as book covers or, or, you know, there's hundreds of ways that these digital images can mm. develop a life of their own and can mm. actually keep bringing in income for an artist who learns how to, to navigate through that, that world of, of digital marketing and digital art. Mm. Um, and it just, it makes it much more possible for an artist to earn a dignified living from their talents because there's only that many paintings that you can paint in a year. Irami, when you're working on a masterpiece, it takes weeks probably for you to, to be able to complete one of those paintings that I see behind you. Mm. Um, and um, there's only one of you. <laughs> so the, the output of the physical art is quite limited. But mm. then if you decide, okay, I'm going to make 50 reproductions of this painting and sell them as beautiful posters on a high quality archival paper for $50 each, all of a sudden you've uh, generated another $2,500 that uh, you could be using to, to pay your next month's rent or to put down a deposit on a, on a piece of land or whatever. So it just, it's, it's an empowering thing for artists. And, and this digital revolution is just hitting Fiji now and uh, we're slowly working its way through the arts community. Some of the artists have figured out very well how to do it. Some of them are selling their art like hotcakes on Facebook already and then mm. other social media platforms. And, and some of the rest of us are still catching up with it. Um, but there's lots of exciting possibilities. So um, yeah, that's, that's just fun mm. to, to be able to explore that together and to, to help each other out as we navigate the both the the pitfalls and the, the, the possibilities of, of doing that. Cynthia and Asada, thank you. We're not going to be able to both of you for um, you know, sharing your, your views and experiences about that. Um, because I know with the music industry, uh, we spoke with Sir uh, Sirevi uh, uh, maybe two months ago. And he was talking about you know the the royalty and the registration for the Fiji Performing Rights Association. So it was really interesting to see you know also they face um, this issue too, um, you know in terms of copyright and also these other singers who are voicing their concerns online as well. But uh, I've just got uh, reminded here that uh, I think there was an announcement yesterday about the bill of intellectual property rights in Fiji. Um, that is going to be put into parliament. So um, that'll be really exciting to see that there's going to be some form of legislation that can be there to protect, um, you know, your artistic uh, work, whether you're a visual artist or performing artist or singer or, um, yeah, whatever background you have, at least there's some uh, positive move here. So uh, let's hope for the best uh, that that will be something yeah, that can support the work of VAPA. Eh? Yeah. And also social media. That's another thing I was, uh, um, you know, alluding to when I was asking about the, you know, artists in Fiji using the digital platform, because uh, it's quite, um, um, you know, lovely to see artists, you know, showcasing their work. But I know some artists can be very shy. Eh, Irami, are you shy? I don't think you're shy, Irami. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know some some artists, as Maria was saying, yeah, some artists are way, way ahead, you know, of putting their work on social media and, and selling it and doing all sorts of things. And also the musicians are doing their fakawela online. Uh, you know, they've been doing fakawelas every other week, I think. So I know uh, we're all looking forward to the event tomorrow. So please, now is the time to tell us about this Dhanyini uh, Vaisau Wind of Change exhibition. So over to you. Um, would you like to start, Irami, and then I pass it over to Maria? Yeah, I will um, briefly explain about why the theme was called Winds of Change. Eh? Yes. Um, you know, after observing all the, uh, what was happening around the world and uh, happening around our community, our nation, on the Pacific, all over the place, you know, it has uh, not only brought about uh, chaos and, uh, and hardship to all of us, but also it has uh, given us opportunity 
opportunity to sort of reflect, sort of, uh, you know, find and find a path, a way to tackle this uh, pandemic. And not only through uh, getting vaccinated, but also, you know, in a way that we could survive uh, in, in many forms. But utilizing what we have already, the resources that we have is the talent. So we, if we have the talent, we gotta find a way to uh, turn that around in order to sustain us during this, uh, you know, Dakar of the world. And uh, wind of change was uh, discussed amongst uh, the committees, and uh, we agreed to the wind of change because it sort of like uh, reflect back on uh, uh, what you know how we we've gone through this, you know, this this. Uh, there's sort of like a wind, na vang in na vang e buka mai e wapu na kina me visa na rai. So winds of change. Um, when I had, for me, the way I relate to it personally is um, when I think about winds of change, I thought about how our ancestors do sail from you know using the ocean and utilizing the elements of nature which is already there, the wind, the ocean, the stars, the moon, how they use traditional navigation. And I'm quite fascinated about that because they only use the wind to navigate and uh, to sail forward in whichever direction they want to sail to. So in, in terms of relating that to the exhibition, uh, for me personally, and I think to the whole committee and to the whole uh, association and the artists, it sort of you know, bring back that hope that there is hope that this wind can change and direct us to a new path and direct us to a better tomorrow. And the only hope is working together as if you're in a sailing canoe or a traditional canoe where everybody is on deck, pulling together those ropes and making sure that the sail is upright and let the wind take us. So that's a, a bit of a metaphor and a, you know, a traditional link to the winds of change on how I personally felt um, why the winds of change or like in the way sound. So I basically you know, respect that and I hold dearly to me on, um, on that uh, thing that we have uh, come up with. So we hope that that thing will inspire you, it will inspire the, the listeners, the viewers, the people, the local communities, the international communities, or whoever is watching this, or whoever is watching the exhibition, you know, somehow we have to navigate and find a way forward for all of us and to find that better, that betterment, uh, the better of our tomorrow. Mm, no, thank you for giving uh, that background eh, to the, uh, the name of the exhibition. Um, so, Sim Vangini Beisau, Wind of Change. Eh? So, for those of you who are listening in, Bolivin Naka na Semachuk Mengi Landi Kitiana Tavakuranga, Nakaban Lebula Semachukumai, the Bulme Australia and the Bulme New Zealand. So, there's a few of our friends from overseas logging in. So, we Nakavaka Lebu for supporting and listening to this conversation because definitely we will need your support. Those of you from overseas, um, we you will need to share this video and uh, also share the information that uh, Maria and Irami are going to be um, sharing about the exhibition. And have an exhibition go na Vangi Nivesau, Wind of Change. Maria. Okay, so um, the exhibition is a virtual art exhibition. I think it's a historic first for Fiji. Um, that a group of artists are getting together and staging an art exhibition online. Um, we were inspired by the, the rock market doing something similar uh, with uh, taking their, their rock markets, their Sunday monthly markets on, online. And um, we thought, well, could we use this model in a way um, that would bring us all together virtually and um, give us a platform, a communal platform um, a very ex, uh, inclusive platform uh, for our artists to, to showcase their work. And uh, we're calling it a celebration of creativity and resilience in challenging times. 
So each artist is interpreting the theme in whatever way they want. That's very much an open thing. Um, one of the artists that uh, I know of here in Nandi is he normally um, does paper art. He, he quills paper, curls little strips of paper to make beautiful greeting cards. And he runs an Instagram business uh, selling his greeting cards. It's quite popular in Nandi if you have a party or an occasion. You buy a greeting card, a beautiful, unique greeting card from William Iseru. And uh, his wind of change is that he's decided he's going to take his, his creativity a step upward and um, create actual works of art. So be going in a bigger format, trying something bigger and bolder with his kind of craft. So turning it from a craft into a work of art. And uh, mm -hmm. so he's stepping right out of his comfort zone in, in doing something different and, and in being part of an, a public event. So having a lot more exposure than, than he normally would have. And, and that for him is, is taking him his own creative career in a new direction, the, the wind of change blowing through his life. Um, and who knows which doors might open for him and how that will turn out. So um, that's just one example of, of the many different ways the artists have interpreted the theme. Uh, we now have all the artwork collected together. The deadline was earlier this week for um, handing in the uh, pieces of art that have been worked on. So we have everything from balambala carvings to um, sculptures made from pieces of scrap metal uh, through to lots of beautiful paintings, acrylic on canvas, uh, acrylic on masi, um, some watercolors, some drawings, digital art. There's a huge big mix of art types. Um, and equally, there's a big mix of artists that have signed up for this. Uh, many new names, uh, young people that uh, most of us had never heard from that have come out of the woodwork and, and uh, have uh, asked to be part of the show. And uh, basically we've said yes to, to, to everybody. We've said, come on, everyone has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we've got the established artists that are right up there making international quality art that uh, is, is uh, you know, being shown in, in high class galleries in overseas places in big, the capital cities of Europe and China and um, Australia, New Zealand, and then equally we've got uh, a few of the artists that are, you know, it's their very first time they're putting some pieces together and they're still learning the ropes. Um, but yet, like we said, everyone has to start somewhere and we've just encouraged them all to come on board and, and uh, be part of the event and, and learn from one another. Um, so on uh, tomorrow evening at six o'clock, is six o'clock Fiji time is when the actual exhibition launches. And uh, it will all be happening on the Vava Fiji Facebook page. So if, you, if, if you're if you in Facebook and you uh, do a search, put in Vava Fiji and our page will pop up and that's where we'll be hosting the exhibition. Um, so it's it's probably a good idea ahead of time to go in there and find the page and uh, make sure you follow it. Please share it with a few other people as well um, and uh, sign up for the event. There's an event sign up uh, page connected to that. And we also have an Instagram too, where we will be uploading the feed of the artwork on Instagram. So uh, Irami, maybe you can explain about how that uh, will carry on through the week, the weekend. Mm. You've been masterminding the, the timetable today. <laughs> yes, uh, so we have a three-day session on uh, this exhibition. So we have the first schedule running in from six o'clock to nine. There's a, quite a good mix of, uh, of artists uh, and their work, uh, really good quality works. And it will be, you know, you'll be in awe to see the images uh, once it goes up uh, on uh, the Facebook page of the Vava. So we have uh, roped in a really good mix in the first session. And then from Saturday, we'll run it from 10 o'clock in the morning right up to 9 o'clock uh, at night. Uh, there's also a good mix of uh, well-established artists, uh, people you might know, uh, names you might uh, come across in the past and some of the new young talent artists. And they are amazing with their works. And uh, 
and you know the be encouraged to encourage these young artists to come up and display their works in, in this uh, platform is really you know we really it really encourages encourages us to do more uh, on sunday also we'll be um, setting up another schedule for some of the the other artists from 10 i think it's from 10 o'clock to 6 p.m and uh, you can tune in you won't miss it uh, it will be there online and uh, you can just share it out to your friends to your colleagues to your families um, read about the uh, artist statement the the artworks and uh, if you have anything to uh, you know contact us back or contact the artist but the main thing you are uh, look into the work and contact the artist directly if you are very much interested in one of their pieces the pieces are there for sale uh, and uh, it would be an opportunity for the artist you know, to engage with you uh, personally on a personal level. Uh, he can contact you in email uh, the artist themselves. All the information will be there. So once that goes up, we'll be really happy to uh, just keep pushing it around uh, to our families and friends and all over the place, uh, not only for Fiji, but outside of Fiji also. See, for those of you listening in, please like the Vava page, uh, Vava Fiji, eh? Vava Fiji uh, on Facebook, uh, also on Instagram. So it's really important eh? if you uh, can follow their page or like their page and go in and sign up on the event, eh? event sign up. All the information is on it. Also, we've been sharing the very beautiful, colorful flyer poster whoever did the flyer job well done i've had so many uh positive comments from my hawaiians uh the hawaiians were like telling me wow this is beautiful who made the flyer so i better <laughs> pass the positive comment to both of you so yeah. i think he's actually listening out to you oh vinak <laughs> Uh, so those are some of the reminders for those of you who are listening in. The exhibition will officially start tomorrow, Friday, the 24th of September at 6 p.m. Fiji time. So as Maria was saying, try and uh, go to their page and uh, be familiar with their page and follow the information that are in there. They'll also have uh, 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 an Instagram page as well. I know a lot of people are also on Instagram. So that's really wonderful and uh, awesome too that they can read the artist statement and also contact the artist directly. Yeah, wow, Rave. Right? So most of the art uh, that will be um, Exhibited tomorrow, we come in our own um, They will be on sale. And we can get them to Chukumidaki, a Voltaki, Keronio Niwasea, and in a live go. We are getting a nomini tokani, the nomini matabubal and a base of Rubura. We came in the Mandangai Viti, a Kevakaitiko Sonavagana, Menda Vito Coni, we are another Don Ruin, we are another Don Bormbor, we are a Vagata Lendi, and a Vicavango. Munibito koni mekin sa kere sarangani wakam bimbi weekend. And I also wanted to say to uh, Maria and uh, Irami, uh, I think uh, as I was saying to Irami too earlier on, eh, the musicians have been, uh, you know, on stage uh, most of this time. Um, now are the visual artists. Yeah, tomorrow is their night, and the whole weekend, not one night but three days. Warumbuka, warowai. Singatam. Yeah, that's really, really awesome. So if you miss out on Friday, you can still jump back on, on, on Saturday and then also on Sunday. So no excuses, friends. Lakumai, Lakumai, the Vitokon, yeah. We need the British pounds and the European Euro and the US dollars. <laughs> 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 I think they, they will really, really need your support. Any Sangha Moli that is uh, sitting in your purse, uh, please send it over to our artists in Fiji because they really, uh, really need uh, your, your support to get them off the ground. Particularly our young artists, there's some uh, fresh in the scene artists and they also some 
um, uh, long serving artists. Yeah? Those of you who have been exhibiting in international museums and art fairs all over the world. So a really good mix. Oh man, I'm excited. Yeah? So now back to you, uh, Irami. And then, uh, or maybe uh, ladies first, we'll go to Maria first, Irami. Go to Maria. Any last comments or any last uh, advice to the listeners? And then I'll get Irami to wrap up. Menaka Maria. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Teresa. It's uh, been really fun to be able to talano with you this evening. And uh, we very much appreciate your support. And we appreciate the support that uh, you generate amongst the Fijian community far and wide across the, the planet. And we just look forward to having all of you as our exhibition guests. Unfortunately, we can't offer you all a glass of champagne, but we are looking out for you online. And uh, um, we also just want to encourage everyone to, if you, if you can fork out to buy a piece of art, wonderful. But if that's not your situation, please just take some time and comment and encourage the artists. Right now, everybody needs a little bit extra encouragement here in Fiji. That life has been really tough and really stressful for everyone. So we hope that this will be an occasion where we can all just uh, celebrate creativity, celebrate resilience and support and uplift one another. And uh, we thank all of you for, for coming on board and hopefully doing that with us starting tomorrow evening. So lovely um, words that you mentioned there. Um, most of the artists say they need that support. Um, even being present tomorrow, uh, that's even yeah, a wonderful thing. Just that's one step closer to offering your support, even if it's financial eventually, oh, that's even better. Yeah? So uh, encouraging our visitors, please pop in tomorrow and join in the, the virtual exhibition yeah? tomorrow, 6 p.m. Fiji time. Nakavakalev Maria. And now I'll pass it over to uh, Vava President and Chairperson Irami Mbuli. Nak. Kumbi <laughs> Maria <laughs> Association of uh, Visual Artists, Facebook page, but again, Instagram. Muni sema mekina ni bamure mai na nono tui tuba tuba au kila ni sema wala ngani tuba tuba ngani mataka ena chiko tana nono tui tuba tuba ena bula mengo kena bota ni bula sabo chiko nalo muni ambaki ngo kena ambaki katuma kema sabani ni bina kuteni rami na nono muno robin rabi ke Maria all the very best kuto sabaka mwadi chiko yani my Hawaii sota ni mataka 6 p.m. Fiji time na kwa kile na kwa kile na kwa romo ne Aka.
Isa. Ni para mucho que ya vieron na no ditoka ni mena baba Fiji Beat Association of Visual Artists na isobo songo ni nonra o irna daka daka ni linga o irna don boromboro en amlon to bono mi beat sa ti ko nonra nga ngandre mera toko ni mena nonra to vari teka daka daka ni linga na dani ni base house en a winds of change exhibition muningay ba ite may kina kabito ko ni mai en a sir ni mataka en a wakarway en a sir na tamu Aku sabar aku mahu dicukai lebih kembali ke desara. Nak balik lebih kembali nasi yang mesti kembali landi. Kita anak tawa ke turana. Nak balik lebih kita anak nasi yang mesti kembali landi. Lebih kembali nasi yang mesti kembali Australia, New Zealand, Amerika, Eropah. Negeri Vito kau ni mana nor tu sesana na Baba Fiji. Viti Association of Visual Artists. Aku sabar aku mahu dicukai ni ni mana mana. Naka.